Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we are continuing our items overview series for Total War Three Kingdoms, as we will be taking a look at all the bows available in the game. And much like what we did with weapons and mounts in our overviews, we will be first taking a look at all the available bows before ending with the tier list. So let's get things started with the common bow set. And the first obvious thing that you're going to be noticing here is that once again, like most items in the game, Bows are categorized into the four rarity system that ranges from common all the way to unique. But unlike the weapons and mounts in the game, which are considered default items, bows falls into the accessory category and are entirely optional for your generals. Therefore, the common variety here will not be provided to you for free with infinite copies like the mounts and weapons. Instead, you must acquire these items through random item spawns each and every turn, or take them off enemy generals who have them. But, like weapons, bows are designed to deal damage in battle, so the first set of stats that we'll be looking at on these bows will be the damage, and there are four components to it. First is the attack rate, which is the number of times you'll be firing in a set amount of time frame, which usually is a minute. So the higher this number is, the higher your DPS will be. But unlike regular retinues, your general's ammo tend to be rather limited, and you never have to trade fire against other range units. So in both regards, this attack speed or attack rate stat is rather meaningless. The next two stat here are much more important, as they are your bow's base and armor piercing damage. And in terms of calculating your total damage output, the process is the exact same as you would for your weapons, where you have to first discount your base damage based on how much armor your opponents have, and then add it on to the armor piercing portion for your total damage. Skills and other methods that would boost your range damage percentage will also be applied to your general, as they would be considered as a retinue in the army, and since at least for this set of four bows, um, the damage is obviously going to scale based on rarity. There's really not much to talk about here, as we can move on to the final stat here, which is range. Now, normally, range is king for retinue bow units or retinue crossbow units. But for generals, much like the attack rate, the range here is less important because, once again, you never really trade fire. And since you're always mobile, the difference between having 200 range and 250 range means very little, as you can always run away if the enemy decides to interrupt your little archery time. Then finally, each bow will also provide some bonus stats, with the main bow set here each providing an increasing amount of cunning as you move up the rarity until you hit 12 points with a black dragon bow, which is the only unique bow in the game that does not start out in the game on someone's hand, and it can also only be acquired either through a really lucky random spawn at the beginning of turn or from farming rebels. Now the reason for this is because weapon craftsmen do not craft bows. The only place that you can craft bows are forge buildings, and those buildings can only craft up to the silver tier or the imperial bow that you see here. So to get the black dragon bow you need to be really lucky with random spawns, or some of the rebel might get it from a faction that got destroyed, or at least that's my theory. Now, as for other bows, there are six other unique bows in the game, and each of them are associated with one unique character in the game. But before we move on to those, we should take note of the two set bonuses that we see here on the main bow set, and they're on the silver and gold tier bows, and each of them have this item set bonus. For the silver imperial bow, the bonus is called Celestial Fury, which requires Shi Xie's armor to complete, so that means only Shi Xie can acquire this set bonus, which will grant your own army 50% additional firing rate. Now, the bonus is quite strong, but since it's only exclusive to Shi Xie, the use is quite limited. Then, for the Black Dragon Bow set, the bonus is called Dragon Storm, which will require the Waking Dragon Armor, which is easily acquired through Armor Craftsman Smith. And once you complete this on any generic strategist, which is the only character who can equip this set, you'll gain a bonus of 25% range damage boost for own army. 
And this bonus, once again, is also quite strong, but also quite hard to achieve because you need to get the ultra rare Black Dragon Bow, which is very difficult to acquire, as we have mentioned. So with this main bow set out of the way, we still have plenty of gold bows to talk about in the game. So let's start with those with Tai Shitsu's Breath and Wind. So at first glance, this bow is pretty straightforward. The damage component, all four stats, are identical to that of the Black Dragon. The only difference here is that you get three points of extra cunning. As a matter of fact, except for the two unique bows that were added in Mandate of Heaven, all the bows add 15 points of stats if they are character-based unique bow, and this one belongs to Tai Shitsu, which can be easily acquired if you play as Kong Rong's faction. You can get him in an early game event, and you can get this bow alongside him. Now there is the case where since Tai Shitsu starts out in the High Empire, this bow often gets stolen before you get him, where let's say Huang Fu Song, the leader of the High Empire, might take this bow and equip it on himself, but hopefully keep your eye out for High Empire characters and you might find yourself this bow later on in the game. And moving on to our next bow, we see one with the same exact stat line, except for the stat boost changes from Cunning to Instinct, but also 15 point. And this is the Cinnabar Red Bow. And this bow often joins the game quite early because it belongs to Baby Sun Ren, who starts out the game as a kid for the 190 start as well as the 194 start. And if you play any of those starts, someone from Sun Jian or Sun Ce's faction, who has Sun Ren in the beginning, will steal her bow and equip it onto themselves. And that's how you should try to get this bow, by stealing those characters. But if you happen to be playing as Sun Jian or Sun Ce's faction, then you have to wait till turn 87 for the 190 start. And I think turn 67, maybe a little bit off from there, but for the 194 start, until Sun comes of age, and that's when you can utilize this bow. Nothing special about this bow, except for the stat change from Cunning to Instinct. Then we get to a couple interesting bows here. These two are the two bows we talked about that were added in, in the Mandate of Heaven, and they have slightly different attack stats, as well as stat boosts and other bonuses. If you notice here, first off, these two bows, or one bow, one crossbow, has the character name in the name of the bow. So Huang Fu Song's bow obviously belongs to Huang Fu Song, and Prince Liu Chong's crossbow obviously belongs to Prince Liu Chong. And you can find them in their respective faction. Huang Fu Song starts out the game in Lu Zhi's faction. And these bows have less damage. They have 1k base and 540 armor piercing, versus the 1.1k base and 600 armor piercing on all the other unique bows in the game. The range is the same, the stat is much less. Instead of 15 points, these only get 10 points, one in expertise, one in cunning, but they will give their own retinues 10% extra ammo, which in my opinion is huge. So here, you're boosting your overall damage output in your whole army. So imagine your retinues have, say, trebuchets, or if they have Chen Peacekeepers, or if they have Chen Royal Guards, for Prince Liu Chong's army, and then for Huang Fu Song's army, we're probably looking at nothing faction unique, so probably Onyx Dragons, but a lot of damage being increased just by adding 10% extra ammo, because that's essentially 10% extra damage output. The bows themselves does lack a bit of punch, and also you cannot fire this while uh, moving or firing backward. That might hurt your damage potential a little bit, but we mentioned this before, the general themselves actually carry very little ammo. And if you consider the general their own retinue too, what you will see here is the damage got decreased by 10% across the board, right? 1.1k to 1k, 600 to 540, but your ammo got increased by 10%. Therefore, your total damage is the same. So you're not losing much on these bows, even though you think the stat is much less. Sure, the cunning expertise is much less, but it's not a big deal you make it back on the extra 10% ammo for own retinue. And that's these two bows from the Mandate of Heaven. Then we move on to two slightly more unique bows. And this is one from the base game that was originally launched, the Heirloom Bow of Huang, which belongs to Huang Zhong, and the Red Wind, which was added in the Furious Wild, and it belongs to Sha Mo Ke. So let's start with the Heirloom Bow of Huang. Huang Zhong, in the story of Romance of the Three Kingdoms, 
was known for his old age and also his skill with the bow, and also him being very strong even past his sixties and still able to pull really really difficult bows. Long bows take a lot of strength to pull the cord, and he still can do it at his old age while hitting things very accurately. So it's kind of reflected in this bow and his pull strength by giving his bow extra range. If you notice here, his bow has 300 range. This is the first bow of all the unique bows or all the bows that has 300 range in the game. And this is a reflection of Huang Zhong's skill. Unfortunately, Huang Zhong starts out in Liu Biao's faction and his bow often gets stolen by the likes of Liu Biao. So also keep your eye out on who has this one. If you're playing as Liu Bao, then you obviously can choose who you want to equip this bow with. But Huang Zhong is a pretty decent choice as he has good firing rate. Damage is the same as the Black Dragon set, so it's kind of the standard bow damage. 15 points of cunning, also pretty standard, able to fire while moving and fire backward. But nothing too special there. The one key special aspect of this bow is the extra range. Then we have the Red Wind, which is really special because damage is the same, range is much less, 150 range. This is probably a reflection of the primitive nature of the Nunman factions and all the low range units like the slingers, the blow darts, and the axe throwers, javelin throwers. So makes sense, the leader's bow also have less range. Stat is also really weird. Instead of the flat 10 points of one stat or flat 15 points of one stat or even the flat 12 points of one stat, we get two stat lines of eight points each for a total of 16, which makes this the bow with the most stat total. And it goes in authority and expertise, which is pretty good because Shamoke is a faction leader. So having some authority definitely help. Expertise make him stronger in combat. The low range, once again, does not matter too much because generals, like we said, don't trade damage, at least don't trade range damage. Therefore, being mobile, you can move up to wherever you want, shoot your damage, and run away. So 150, 200, 250, 300, not a big deal. Because you're not going to outrange, say, towers. So in the end, it doesn't really matter. You can still fire while moving and also fire backward. But the most unique part about this bow is that you have two item sets on the same bow. They're both called Heart of Courage. There's a first part and a second part. The first part is a combo with the bow and Shamoka's armor, which makes sense because Shamoka would have this bow in his campaign. He does not start with it. This is a wedding gift from King Duosi if you marry your sister to him. So it's an event, but it's a guaranteed event. So you're definitely going to have this. If you're not playing a Shamoka, then the AI Shamoka will start with this bow. And at that point, you can defeat his faction, confederate him, and get him to add it to your roster. That's a pretty easy way to acquire both Shamoku and the bow, so it's pretty consistent in acquiring this. And the set bonus, obviously, first one is automatically enabled because you always have your armor bounded to you. And what you will give your retinue here is 10% extra melee damage for melee infantry. Not a bad bonus. But the really strong bonus here is that if you can get your hand on an overseer follower item, and equipped it on Shamoku alongside his armor, which is automatically bounded, and this red win, then all your retinues will get fatigue immune. That's the huge bonus. Imagine fatigue immune elephants, which you can because you have Nanjong Elephant that can play the drum and give all the units around them fatigue immunity, but let's say you don't have Nanjong Elephants yet, or if you're using infantry, because Shamoku has some very good melee infantry, those strong axe units, you can apply this on them, so they become fatigue immune as well as extra damage. So overall, this has a lot of potential, and it's definitely one of the stronger items in the game. So that's going to do it for all the bows. There's 10 of them. Let's go back to the tier list and rank them. Shouldn't take us very long here. And here we are with the tier list. Now, with only 5 categories and 10 bows, let's start with the bottom, because it's pretty obvious what we're going to do here. At D tier, a common bow is going to slot right in. The composite bow is going to go to C tier, and the imperial bow will go to B tier, where well, all these unique bows will fill out S and A. So, between these seven remaining bows, the black dragon, the generic set bow, is going to slot into A, and probably the bottom tier of A. Because it's very hard to acquire this bow, and when you acquire it, its damage is on par with the rest of the unique line, but it has less stats. It only has 12 points of stat and no other bonuses. The set bonus you can consider as a little extra, but 
it's kind of hard to get both the waking dragon and the black dragon and the hard part is the black dragon if you can find this bow consider yourself very lucky then alongside it we're going to put two of the more boring bows from the unique set and that's going to be breath and wind and the cinder red bow and i think the cinder red can probably be in the middle here because it boosts instinct Therefore, it means the character using this will have less ammo, so the bow itself will do less damage. It's more of an accessory item, really, just to help boost your melee base damage on the character and add a little sparkle of arrow damage in case you can snipe maybe an enemy strategist on the battlefield. Breath and Wind, on the other hand, gives you 15 points of cunning, which can help your retinue, can help yourself, giving you more arrows to shoot. Because ideally, you're giving these bows to otherwise weak strategists who can now dish out maybe at least 10k worth of damage to enemy generals from afar. Then the remaining four bows all have something special going for them, so they're going to go into the S tier. And at the bottom of the S tier, we're going to slot in Huang Fu Song's bow, which boosts expertise, which means it's going to be worse in a similar fashion as the center bar uh, red bow. And above it, it's going to be Prince Liotong's crossbow, which boosts cunning, if only 10 points, and also 10% extra ammo for own retinue, which you can think about as an extra cunning boost, because cunning gives extra percentages of ammo. 10% is actually quite a lot of cunning if you want to see that boost actually happen in the army. So it's actually quite nice in terms of stat boost. Then of the two remaining bows, I think the heirloom bow of Huang will be next by merit of it having 300 range. Um, other than that, there's not too much going for it. I can see an argument where you might want to place this below, let's say, Huang Fu Song's bow, because having extra range doesn't mean very much in the game, especially for generals. But since it is special in that sense, and Huang Zhong is well known for his archery skills, I'm going to place it kind of second here. And obviously, the Red Wind would slot in as our best bow, simply for its two item set bonuses which are quite strong and the bow itself obviously same damage output shorter range if we're not going to reward Huang Zhong's bow for having extremely long range I don't think we should punish the red wind for having extremely short range just because the bonuses that provide 10% extra melee damage for melee units as well as fatigue immunity for home retinue which is huge because that's also fatigue immunity on Shamoko himself, and you know how generals can utilize that uh, to great effect. So that's going to be our tier list here. For the next couple episodes of our item overview series, in particular items like followers and ancillary items, we're not going to have a tier list component, because often you're comparing apple to oranges. For these more direct comparisons in terms of bow, we'll do tier lists. In the future, I think think the next tier list you can expect down the line might be a general's armor tier list. That one will probably have to also wait a little bit because I want to do that as part of the general tier list series, which is probably coming in January at currently. That's how it's looking. So I'll update you guys on that and hopefully you guys enjoy this one and see you all next time. Bye.